I'm Heidi Muir, Heidi White Muir. My family is a Haynes family. My grandfather was Howard Haynes, and he purchased 10,000 acres up the East Fork of Chalk Creek in the 30s, 1932, and it's been in our family ever since. With the grandparents and the parents having been here and worked with it, I feel like it's just, I don't even know how you say it. It's, it's in your blood. It's just, it's our heritage. It's a legacy that we want to continue on as long as humanly possible. I'm Colby Pace. I'm from Colville, Utah, and I'm a third generation rancher here in Summit County. You know, water is, is, is 110% of our whole operation. Everything has to have a drink. Birds, us, I mean, it's, it has a whole part of the whole ecosystem. I grew up here, so when I was a kid, I used to fish uh, a lot of these streams and, and uh, I had the privilege to, to catch you know some of these these cuts and I just I remember, had a lot of fond memories I remember what what the streams were like and and you know uh, over my lifetime I've seen a change in the streams climate change and erosion and flooding and just a lot of those players have all made it tough for streams and last year was the first year I've ever seen that I remember in my life ever seen Huff Creek or Fish Creek actually go dry uh, in July, and that's, that's, that's a tough thing to watch. So we're standing in Fish Creek right now, which flows into Chalk Creek, and Chalk Creek is an important tributary to the Weber River. Um, it flows into Echo Reservoir, and it's an important um, tributary to that drinking water source. Having streams that are cut down, way down deep into the landscape is, um, it's not what was likely here in the past. And historically, what, where I'm standing now was likely a wet meadow or some kind of a wetland that just held water year round and provided a lot of kind of green, grassy forage and willows and other kind of cottonwood trees as well. We can hopefully restore some of these streams to a more perennial flow uh, to what they, they used to be, then, then we're gonna make things better for everybody involved as far as the resource goes. Stream restoration has been a huge part of my life. So we uh, started in, like I say, 93, 94. There was a resource management plan made for the Chalk Creek. And so we did stream restoration work, meaning rock jetties, rock barbs. We fenced off the creek for riparian areas. We planted willows and a lot of the neighbors did the same work. And so then we started about eight years ago, uh, the resource management plan in South Fork and in the Fish Creek area with a collaborative effort of uh, 20 landowners with about 38,000, around 40,000 acres to do different projects. During last summer's weather events, it was really exciting to see that enthusiasm for let's get more BDAs built. And so we constructed 22 just a couple weeks ago with one of our landowners, Fred, in a creek over this way in the, in the headwaters. And then we have 75 planned with another landowner over another direction. So we are really doing a lot of, of BDAs and this low tech process-based restoration, which can be um, very cheap and effective for landowners. This beaver dam analog, or human-made beaver dam, is about three years old, and volunteers built this. So they installed fence posts here using small hand tools, and, um, and then they clipped vegetation and mud and rocks and weaved it into the structure until the water started slowing down behind it. They're basically accumulating wood and, and this debris all comes from flash floods that come through here. And so these structures are just capturing materials that would have otherwise flowed downstream and clogged up infrastructure. But we're also creating these wet, uh, wetted banks and growing vegetation that couldn't have survived here before. And that's really great for wildlife and for ag production. Uh, the riparian areas act like these big sponges and when you put BDAs or beaver dams, especially in the upper parts of the watershed, the middle parts of the watershed, they're a buffer against climate change and against the changes we're seeing. Call 
what it was like to be at the Peter release today. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we did, we released three big beaver today, um, about halfway up our ranch, um, a beautiful beaver pond that hadn't had beaver for a few years. So bringing those in, we thought there was gonna be one, and there were three juvenile beavers. I don't know how, but beavers are really cute. <laughs> they are such an amazing animal. You set the cage down, you open up, and you just, knowing that they'd been in a culvert or a ditch, and. A lot of folks would go ahead and kill them and the fact that we needed more beaver and those were available just to see this little animal just slip right into their natural habitat and before you knew it one was over on the bank chewing some reeds eating and the others were kind of cruising around the perimeter and checking it out it was just nature as it should be we'd done something good I kind of remember as a child hearing that, you know, those damn beaver, you know, have gotten into such and such. But I think there's become more of an appreciation that beaver's such a keystone animal. If you don't have that solid foundation, you know, the whole ecosystem doesn't work well. Beavers are the best engineers. They work 24 seven. They, uh, they don't require any wages. You just gotta give them some aspen, willow, or cottonwoods. They'll do the work for you. I think they're going to be a difference maker, especially as we move forward into a warming climate, shorter snow season, uh, if we're going to keep these systems productive. It, it really is important from a ranch perspective to not just take from the land, but to give back for not only the rancher and the, and the person that needs an income from the ranch, but also the water. The, the, the wildlife, the fish, to be able to continue that resource for everyone. When I see families, you know, that, I, that I've always known, um, and they, you know, they grew up on this, this country and this land, they, they operate on this land, and, and when I see them engage in, in things like that, and they say, we want to do what's best to maintain the things that we remember on this, this landscape and even improve it, that gives me hope. Uh, when I see the younger generations, when I see their kids and they're, they're out here with their dad and saying, yeah, you know, uh, this, is, this is cool. This is something that uh, hopefully in the future we can continue to, to work on innovative ideas to try and improve conditions on the landscape, keep uh, you know, the opportunity to, to graze livestock and uh, you know, provide habitat for big game uh, and, and songbirds and uh, that gives me hope. I work and I work for a reason because I, I love the land and I hope the land loves me back and I plan to leave the land as, as well as it got left for me. Legacy is truly exactly what I'm doing. I'm just here for my family to try to make sure that we can continue working with the land and that my children and grandchildren and hopefully great-grandchildren can enjoy it as long as humanly possible. Do you think you will be around on this land when you grow up? Possibly, probably, yeah. Yeah, what makes you say that? Because like every year or when I get older, it would get passed down to me, and then when I have children, they'll be passed down to them. And my children have children, it'll be passed down to them. 